So uh, my thought this morning was to just hang out with you for a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk through some scriptures that are on my heart, and uh, we'll pray together and take communion together. And uh, if you don't have one of these, these confusing little things that actually have the wafer in the top. So those of you that just thought it was juice only, there's actually a wafer in here and there's two layers. So if you don't have one of these, then go grab a little piece of bread or, uh, and, and some juice or something like that and we'll take communion together later on. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that the elders, uh, we are so uh, encouraged by how the body has responded during this crazy time. Um, you know, there's, there's so many ways that we can uh, respond to crazy situations like this where, you know, you, f- you feel the pressure, you start thinking about all of the politics and conspiracies and all of these different things that, that at least go through my mind that the enemy wants to rob us of our peace. And um, you guys have done well. And I want to encourage you that uh, we've heard lots of good things about how you're treating one another, about how you're treating your neighbors. And um, that's part of what I want to talk about today is just the, how the church responds and how you as an individual can respond to these uh, crazy times. So with that, let's, uh, let's hang out. Everybody, hopefully you have your coffee. I'm going to grab my coffee. Um, Unfortunately, I'm almost done with this, so I w- can somebody get me a, a refill, please, somebody? Okay. So I'm going to try to get some scriptures up here in front of us, too, so that you guys can follow along. And um, just wanted to... Um, also, are there any announcements? I don't think there are. No, no announcements so far, but there are cer- certain individuals watching right now that need to clean their room. So um, go clean your room after service, okay? Uh, it's Sunday, and what else are you going to do? Clean your room, then go outside and play, all right? That's for you. You know who you are, all right? Um, so First Thessalonians is where we want to start. Um, First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 9, I will... Uh, I will put the scripture up on the screen, hopefully. Yes, there it is. So, first, or sorry, first Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 9. It says, For what thanks can we render to God for you in return for all the joy with which we rejoice before our God on your account, as we night and day keep praying most earnestly that we may see your face and may complete what is lacking in your faith. This scripture has been on my heart for the past several weeks. So uh, each morning I use a Bible app and each morning I can't, I haven't been able to get past this passage because I keep thinking about you. I keep thinking about the church. I keep thinking about what God is bringing us through together, uh, even though we're apart, and how wild it is that even though we're apart and we're not seeing each other, we're so unified. Um, there's so much unity right now uh, with the church, and a lot of the things that that maybe bothered us in the past are kind of, they went from being big things to being small things, didn't they, pretty quick. Um, but this scripture, this passage in, bet- in particular, really uh, has been on my heart. And um, so I just wanted to talk through that. And then uh, there's another passage after this that I wanted to hang out with you guys on in First Peter. Uh, but this one, again, First Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. And it says, For what thanks can we render to God for you? in return for all the joy with which we rejoice before our God on your account. That's what I was doing earlier when I I mentioned how we've been hearing 
the elders of Brighton Christian have been hearing how you guys have responded, how you've been treating one another, how you've been feeding one another, how you've been giving gifts to one another for those that are in need. Uh, it's fantastic and so, so very encouraging. So we rejoice before our God on your account as we night and day keep praying most earnestly that we may see your face and may, be, may complete what is lacking in your faith. Um, we so much want to get together with everybody, and we know that that day is coming soon. And uh, we want to be together to complete what is lacking in your faith, meaning just continue to help build you up in the Lord and build you up in Christ Jesus. Continuing on, verse 11, Now may our God and Father himself and Jesus Christ our Lord direct our way to you, and may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another. Which you do. You abound in love for one another and for all people, just as we also do for you. Now, um, I want to stop here a minute, too. Uh, we desire, we pray that God will direct our way to you. I take this and I pray this in, in this moment. That God would make a way for us to be together again. That he would direct our way to one another. That he would open the doors of this church building. He's already opened you guys up to be the church which you are being, which is fantastic. Um, our prayer is that God himself and Jesus Christ our Lord will direct our way to you. And may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another, which you have shown already. You are increasing and abounding in love for one another. And for all people. Now that's the tough one for all people, that we may increase and abound in love, not just for one another, but for all people, just as we also do for you. All people, uh, whether they agree with us or not, whether they're for us or against us, we need to increase and abound in love for all people. And that's my prayer this morning. Continuing on to verse 13. So that he may establish your hearts without blame in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Church, I believe that Jesus is coming soon. I believe his, his time is, the time here is, is shorter and shorter. And of course, with each day that passes, that is so very true. So, Lord, we pray that you would come. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that you would bring an end to this, um, to this quarantine, that you would bring the truth, uh, your truth, to the surface, and that many, many people would come to know you during this time. Thank you, Lord. So that's 1 Thessalonians, and that's been on my heart uh, as you could probably hear, um, not unusual for this guy to well up with tears, uh, but that's, uh, that is on my heart a lot. And praying that we can see one another very soon, is, uh, it's exciting to me to think about, it's exciting to me to get to that point, um, whether we're Wi-Fi high-fiving or whether we're hugging um, one way or another, uh, I don't care. I just want to see you guys face to face, and that's my prayer. And it's it's uh, been interesting to see God's word and Paul's letters to the church kind of open. It gives you a new perspective on his thoughts as he's praying these things and, and his heart to see the church and to um, visit with them and have them visit him. Um, so... I wanted to, uh, to share that with you and, and pray through that scripture with you. And I encourage you to pray through that as well. Um, again, that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, 
verses 9 through 13. Um, and so um, that's that. I wanted to also share with you guys uh, first, first Peter chapter 3. And um, this is a little bit of a longer passage, but I'm going to talk through it. Um, let's, let's start with, with verse 10. Sorry, verse 8. Let's back up. All right. Still learning the new system. So, 1 Peter chapter 3, starting with verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Be of one mind. Let's have compassion for one another. When we, go to, when we are able to go out to Costco or Meijer or Walmart or, or wherever you go to shop, um, have compassion for one another. Have um, love and be tenderhearted. Be courteous. And when you're on social media, be courteous. Don't return evil for evil or reviling for reviling. Um, I will say this, and let me say it to your face. Give up your right to be right on social media. Okay, that's all. That's all I got to say about that. All right, so continuing on, verse 10. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him speak peace and pursue it. Pursue peace. I love that. Seek it out. Pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So let's refrain from speaking evil and speaking deceit. Let's turn away from evil and do good. I was talking this morning with, with my daughter-in-law, Jordan, and um, peace is something that we have to embrace. It's not something that uh, we always feel. Um, peace is something that the Lord, much like salvation, is received by faith, and we, we believe it by faith. I also believe that God is giving you peace and saying, here, I've given you peace. Will you take it? And we have to embrace that. We have to embrace that peace and receive it by faith, whether we feel like it or not. Um, we're not going to feel peaceful all the time. We're not going to have peace in our hearts and minds, especially during this time. But, um, but I think it's important that we know that we have peace in the Lord. He's promised us his peace beyond these circumstances. He's promised us, in his words, peace that passes all understanding. We have to embrace that, and um, I think that's part of, part of our walk is to think about that like we think about our salvation. We don't earn our salvation. We don't work our way to salvation. Sometimes we don't even feel saved, but by faith, we are saved because we've received that free gift from God. In the same way, um, we need to receive his peace, especially during this time. Um, we are carriers of hope to the world, and we need to be able to have peace and exude peace and exude hope and shine the light uh, and be lights in this world um, during this dark time especially. So I think I was on verse 13. So 1 Peter 3, 13. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. You are blessed even if you suffer for righteousness' sake. And do not be afraid of their, of their threats, nor be troubled. Again, by embracing the peace that passes all understanding, you are blessed. And we can, we can say confidently that we don't have to be afraid of any threats or be troubled 
because we're followers of Christ Jesus. We're followers of good. Continuing on, verse 15. Verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord your God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. So again, first of all, this, this, let me unpack this a little bit, and maybe you've heard me talk about this before, but this is, this is so important, especially right now. We live in a world that is giving up. We live in a world where a lot of people um, have no hope. They don't know the Lord. They don't have hope. And we do. We do have hope. We have hope in Christ. We know where we're going at the end of it all. You know, God forbid that we get coronavirus or we get the flu or we get cancer or we get something else that might stop us from living. We still have hope beyond all of that because we know that at the end of it, eternity, we spend eternity in the presence of our Lord. And we have that hope. And it's a real hope. It's not just a felt hope. It's a real hope that is in us, placed there by the Lord. Because we've sanctified him in our hearts. We've set him apart in our hearts and we've made him first so that we'll be ready to give defense to those who ask us for the reason, for the hope that is in us. They have to they, they will have to have a reason to ask us, by the way. We need to shine and show hope to this lost world. We need to show them that there is hope. Okay, continuing on, verse 17 says, For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Verse 19. By whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient when, the, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through the water. Um, I wanted to stop here for a minute because this is talking about the time of Noah when everybody did what was right in their own eyes. So you can imagine how hopeless the world was during that time. Um, the Bible says that everybody did what was right in their own eyes and uh, there was no law, and it was just an awful time for humanity. That's when God kind of was like, I think I need to hit the reset button here. I, I, think I, I think you guys have just completely missed the point, and we need to start over. And he did that. He did that through the flood, but he brought, obviously, Noah and his family through it. The righteous were brought through it. Um, and saved from the disaster that, that happened. But consider what happened to the souls of those people who died in the flood. Consider their lives, their souls. Where did they go? Uh, the Bible talks about this, uh, this place called Abraham's bosom and, and another place called that, that's a place of torment for the unrighteous. And that's where a lot of, I believe, where they ended up. Um, and that's what this verse is addressing. Can you imagine being hopeless, thinking, I'm already dead. What is, 
uh, this is horrible. There is no hope. There is no hope. There is no hope. And then 1 Peter says that by whom he went and preached to the spirits in prison, Jesus, made alive in the spirit, went and preached to the spirits in prison who formerly were disobedient. And the NIV says in verse 20, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. God waited patiently. What do you think God is waiting patiently for right now? That kind of made me scratch my head and think about what God is doing right now. We, we, everywhere we look, we see a lot of um, suffering, a lot of pain, deceit, a lot of negativity, uh, disease, famine, all of these end times things that we know uh, are signs. But we also know that God is patient. And he doesn't desire that any are lost. He doesn't desire that any should suffer. And so we are his hands and feet right now to the world to be bringers of hope. Are you a bringer of hope? Who in your life, even though you might be, we're, we're all locked down and we, we might not get out and talk with a lot of people, who is in your life that you can reach out to, to be an encouragement, to be a light? Who is it that you can be a ray of sunshine, for lack of a better word? Just stop a minute and pray, and let's, let's ask the Lord right now for him to bring some people to our hearts. Let's just, let's just do that right now. Let's, let's stop a minute and pray and ask the Lord to bring some people to our hearts that we have the ability to reach out to. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that through this time, you have helped us to be grateful for the little things, those things that we take for granted, to be able to just get up and go somewhere, to the movies, to the store, to wherever. God, I, I ask right now that you would make it real in our hearts, the hope that is found in you. God, we're so grateful for salvation in Christ. We're so grateful, God. We're grateful for life in you. God, we're thankful not just for salvation for heaven, but salvation for right now. Salvation that we can be hope where there is no hope, that we can be light in the darkness God. Lord, being a Christian right now is so vital, Lord, that, that we can be the church right now where we are, um, in our homes. Lord, when we do go out for groceries or go to, to wherever to, um, to shop or to whatever we need to do, Lord, outside of our homes, God, help us to know how to be a ray of light, Lord, to the lost. Help us to know how to be, how to show hope to the world. God, right now, I ask that you would bring to mind somebody that we need to be reaching out to. Somebody that might be alone somebody that might not have salvation in you yet, somebody that needs to experience you. Lord, help us to be that conduit. Help us to know how to reach out to them. What's the best way, Lord, to reach out to them? Is it through social media? Is it through text? Is it through a phone call? Is it through a letter? 
Is it through a, a simple care package that we send to them? God, I pray that you would um, give us vision, give us uh, a person or people in mind, Lord, that we can send these packages to or this letter to or, or that text or that phone call. Lord, work through us. Help us to step out by faith and to be hope to the hopeless. Help us, God, to be your hands and feet to the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Uh, I think I'll stop there. I, I wanted to, um, let's go into a time of communion. Um, I wanted to also encourage you to set your mind on things above. And we've, we've done some things, um, you know, if you've got, if you've got iTunes or, or some sort of music library on your computer, uh, make a new playlist that is all about thinking on good things. Make a playlist that is songs that you can worship to. And as you begin to feel the weight of the world and the weight of things that are happening around you, um, start playing that playlist. And if you don't know how to do that, reach out to one of the kids in the church. <laughs> we'll be able to help you out. I'm going to count myself as a kid. I'm not a kid, but I can help you if you need it. <laughs> um, one thing that we've done is uh, on the church app, I wanted to show you this. If you go to the Brighton Christian Church app, which is that one, so opening the church app, all right? And then you go to stay connected, okay? Click on stay connected, all right? Now, if you scroll up, you'll see this neat little icon here that says scripture memory pop symphonies. So it's a long story, but long story short, um, the guy that put this album out uh, I spoke with him, and he said, if your church wants to use this to be encouraged by them or by these songs, uh, then use it however you want. So if you click on that, it opens every song on here. Now, a downfall to the app is that it only plays the one song at a time, but if you scroll down, you'll see at the bottom it says Scripture, Memory, Pop, Symphonies, and that's the whole album on one track. So that's about 45 minutes worth of real scripture in um, styles of like Tom Petty, the Beatles. It's not, it's not um, parodies, it's it, their original songs and they're uh, really well done. And I think that it would be a, a, a real encouragement. Um, that, that's been a tremendous encouragement to me so if you ever find yourself struggling with setting your mind on things above and you're, you're uh, constantly distracted by news and press conferences and political posts and friends and conspiracies and blah, 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 all these things, um, shut that down and turn your eyes to the Lord. Fix your eyes on things above, not on earthly things. Think on good things, wholesome things, things of good report. And that may help you to do that.